Hi there. In this video, we'll talk about processing raw EMG signal and some other factors that um, are unique or are apl applicable to EMG signaling. So first, let's look at the raw EMG signal. It is basically, looks like noise, right? It's really chaotic and random, but you can see some patterning here, right? The muscle is turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. But the signal itself, especially if we blew this up, it would look very much like noise. So how do we process this to, to be able to look at it a little bit better? The first thing most people do is full wave rectify it. And that just means taking all the negative signaling and taking the absolute value and making everything positive. So now it's just a little bit easier to see muscle contraction, rest, muscle contraction, rest. Then what happens is they make a linear envelope and it's basically a smoothing of a, um, basically decreasing the low, higher frequencies and just keeping the lower frequencies. So now we can see a nice smooth curve of here's muscle contraction, pause, muscle contraction, pause, muscle contraction, pause, etc. And it's a little bit easier to figure out its peak value or get the area under the curve if you want to get a total total muscle activation. Here's just another view. Again, we can see the raw EMG here. There's a burst of activation, pause, activation, pause. Then you go to the full wave rectified signal. So all the negative signaling are deleted out and everything is positive. And then you go through a linear envelope, which is just basically smooths the curve so you can just see the nice contractions. All right, so let's look at the type of contraction, right? We talk about EMG representing muscle activation, but muscles can be used concentrically, eccentrically, or even isometrically. But on this graph, we have flexor force, so force in newtons on the x-axis, and EMG, or muscle activity, on the y-axis. And then we have this relationship between these two variables um, in blue for concentric contractions and in green for eccentric contractions. All right, and so this, this graph tells us a few things. If we want to compare the EMG activation of these two types of contractions at the same force, that would be this dotted line. All right, so this dotted line is basically saying at this force, let's say 10 newtons, we have this level of EMG activation for eccentric contraction, so we'll call this E, and we have this level of EMG activation for C, for the concentric. So you can say at the same force, you need less EMG activation for an eccentric contraction compared to a concentric contraction. And hopefully this makes you think about um, the differences in, in force activation between eccentric and concentric um, that we talked about in muscle mechanics. So this is basically saying the eccentric contractions are a bit more efficient, right? You need less input to get a certain force output. So we can pretend that the eccentric contractions are the, the hybrid vehicles the electric vehicles, and concentric contractions are our standard or gas guzzling vehicles. Another way to look at this, and let me see if I can delete everything off. Sorry, this is very inefficient. Um, we can say, all right, we're gonna look at it a different way. We're gonna say at a certain level of EMG activation, so this is, you know, EMG level X. At that level, concentric contractions develop this force, CF. Eccentric contractions develop this force. Call that EF. And we can see at the same EMG level, activation level, you can, the outcome is a higher force for an eccentric contraction compared to a concentric contraction. Here's some data from a few years ago from a, a biomechanics lab. And it is a push-up activity. 
change this to yellow. Um, and you can see, so this, this level, it's raw EMG. Actually, it's full wave rectified EMG, not linear envelope yet. But it's easy to see that there's a higher activation for the up phase, lower activation during the down phase. And you can see this goes up, lower down, up, down. So the up phase of a push-up is the concentric contraction phase. And the down phase is the eccentric. And so this holds true that you would expect to have for the same force, right? You're still doing the same push-up, pushing the same body up and down. You need higher EMG activation for the concentric contraction at the same force than for the eccentric contraction. And here's just another example of the same thing. Higher levels of activation during the up phase and lower EMG activations during the down phase. Within this video of uh, called the EMG factors, I want to go back to this common mode rejection concept that you need two surface EMG electrodes because that will help you decrease your noise, which comes from the surrounding area of your data collection. And just to remind you that um, in electrode one, what you get out of that electrode, which is basically an amplifier, you get the muscle activation one plus all the noise. And then as you go to electrode number two, you get muscle activation two plus the same noise. So M1 and M2 are different because the electrodes are slightly separated on the muscle belly. So get a different view, if you will, of the muscle contraction or the muscle activation that results in a contraction. But the noise, the external noise, is going to be the same. So this comment of common mode rejection. What is common to both electrodes will be rejected. So when you subtract the signal, you get rid of the noise, the end factor, and you're just left with the muscle activation. And this is another um, view of processing the data, but the reason that I popped this one into this video is you can see you have a raw signal, um, EMG activation, and it's being picked up by two electrodes, and then this is the signal that we are processing, and you do the full wave rectification rectification, and then the smoothing or the linear envelope. And again, um, a viewpoint of that location of these two surface electrodes is key. It is um, good practice to put them two centimeters apart midway along the longitudinal axis of the muscle belly. So this would be ideal. This would be considered the ideal EMG activation. And you can say as you put it closer to the tendon or just a little off to the side within the center part of the muscle belly or a little proximally or distally, you will have much different and um, potentially lower readings and inaccurate readings. So location of these electrodes is key.